all, children. Are you ready for some cooking up and kiki in? Are you ready for a gay old time? Well, I hope you are. Because now it's time for Hey Queen Beach House with your host, Johnny McGovern. <laughs> And floozies, and welcome to another Do I Have Something on My Face episode of Hey Queen with me, your host, Tess, Mr. John T. McGovern. Yes, yay for me! Elephant Journey, my own implause breaks. Today's show is going to be Flaze Da. That's right, Flaze Da, my honeys. We have a fashionista in the beach house. Yes, we do. Our guest today has made a name for herself and kept herself relevant. She made it all the way to the top three from season seven of RuPaul's Drag Race. Today, we bring you the gorgeous, talented, and sexy as hell, Pearl! Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh my God. But before she dives on out here, there's another precious gem we need to talk about. If this lady were a gem, she'd be a mother of Pearl. She's a surf to my turf, the dinghy to my ship of life. And just like a pearl, she's lustrous, she's cultured, and to find her, you really gotta dig deep. It's Miss Lady Recordor! Hey. <laughs> oh. oh, I have mm -hmm. a surprise. Oh, for me? For you. I, I have no idea why you could possibly give me a surprise. Maybe because uh -huh. it's your birthday! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you! Happy birthday, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. That is very sweet. <laughs> now, in addition to all of this, all of this, we also have some very special messages from people who came to Hey Queen, and they're quite popular. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Let's check it out. Happy birthday to you. I want to say a big happy birthday to Johnny McGovern. Oh my goodness, Hey Queen. Happy birthday to Johnny. I love you so much. We love you, Johnny. We Johnny, love you. happy having a wonderful birthday. day. Yeah. Happy birthday. I'm a young woman in Cape Cod, and I'm here to wish you, Johnny McGovern, happy birthday. You've done great things for our community. You're an icon, and I love you so much. Oh, that was so sincere. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I really like oh you. Oh, my God. Oh. How am I still so young? Oh. I do not know. <laughs> all right, well, enough about my birthday. Thank you to Trixie, Ben De La Graham, Raja, and all the rest for your lovely birthday messages. And uh, we don't have time to keep talking about me, sweetie, because we have the legendary oh. Pearl is on the show today, sweetie. Yeah. A snack of major proportions. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, we're going to be with her right after this very gay break. See you in a This is delicious. Oh. today was the crush of every homo in America <laughs> during her time on RuPaul's Drag Race, but it's been after the race that this queen has carved out a lane of her own as a DJ, a model, a doll creator, and an all-around fashion icon. <laughs> She's here today, the glamorous, the sexy, Pearl! <laughs> Oh my God! Bar. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Hey, Queen. Hey, girl. I'm so excited that we finally got you here. You I and I know. talked about this during like season two or something like that. I know. It's just like every time you get to LA, there's so much to do, yeah. and we just couldn't figure out the right time. But, I know, but the we, time has come. The time has come. Yes. For you to slay the game in yes. this look. Can you please just? Stand and twirl. Oh, in this you want me to? You want me look? to show it off a little yes, bit? Yes, please. Oh, wow. oh, oh my God! 
Ooh, wow. Oh, yes. Awesome. This is actually um, the robe I wore on the last episode. Oh, really? Yes, of my season. It is an artifact. A RuPaul's Drag Race fashion It's universal, artifact. you know. One day you're on RuPaul's Drag Race wearing it, the next day you're at the beach. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you and Lady Ren are the fanciest ladies at the beach. We are giving you shell pink realness, <laughs> and we are ready to go. So, Queen. Hi. You, I mean, it seems like just yesterday, in some ways, that you were on RuPaul's Drag Race, but it's been a minute. Oh my God, it's been, uh, I think I filmed, what, four and a half years ago? Yeah. But um, yeah, not only has it been a long time, time-wise, but just so much has changed on Drag Race, and it's like, you know, they've jam-packed like 20 years of evolution into five. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you definitely have reaped the benefits. You have become kind of like a fashion icon. You've been in Vogue, L, W, Harbs Bazaar, Cosmopolitan, and the rest. <sighs> yeah, kind of. I mean, they don't like to put us in print or anything, uh -huh. but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been like really crazy being like a nobody from Florida who just trying to figure out what to do with my life. And then all of a sudden these opportunities just came and yeah, I mean, you really have to, it's not just like being on RuPaul's Drag Race is going to make your career for you. You really yeah. have to like have that something in you that's going to keep people interested in you. Your transformation makeup videos that you've been doing lately. Right? Now, that, have you been doing that your whole life? When did you no. really start to dive into that? No, I, I hadn't been doing it my whole life. I had never done one before ever. But um, yeah, I did like the Cosmopolitan transformation. And oh, I so really... that was a Cosmopolitan video initially. Yeah, well, yeah. they invited not just me, but like yeah, a ton, everybody of, to ton do of drag race queens yeah. to go and do it. So, but you did your I, own spin on it. Yeah, um, yes, I really had a great time. I loved the turnout. I loved, I just love the art of transformation and makeup, like whoever it is doing it. But um, yeah, I'm recently I did uh, the campaign for Sleek Makeup when it's a UK brand, and they came to the states, and um, they had me. Miss Fame and Violet a part of it with like some really big YouTube uh, makeup gurus. Oh, that's like the super friends getting back together. Oh I yeah, like totally. It. Yeah, it was really cute. Um, so after just discussing these YouTube gurus lives and uh, hearing about the opportunities that they're getting and mm. the money that they're making, <laughs> right. and I, I was like really blown away. And you know, I me mean, just always kind of trying to find my place in drag, you know, because I'm mm. not necessarily like a showgirl, you know, right. it's not, like I love to go and do those things, but primarily full-time traveling 24 seven is just, I've realized it's not really for me. Okay. So um, yeah, like with that experience and my love and passion for makeup and transformation, uh, yeah, I was like, why can't I do this? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> let's talk Bladonna, honey. Yes, please. Pearls doll, they're her own customizable oh. drag inspired fashion dolls, Bladonna. Oh. Yes. Now, is this was still with Kid Robot? Yeah. That is such a cool collaboration. Thank you so freaking much. Yeah, it was pretty much a dream come true. I, um, ever since I was a kid, I've loved playing with dolls. I mean, I was like totally that kid getting Barbies for Christmas. My mom was great that way. She loved supporting me and all of that. And um, yeah, I love to repaint dolls. I would strip Barbie's face <laughs> right. off with nail polish remover and paint them back on and rip all of her hair out and make little wigs. And wow. Yeah, I was pretty, <laughs> Pretty faggoty as a God bless. as a child, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I always dreamed of having like a more voluptuous body, yadi yadi. Right, like Barbie a real out there Barbie. Yeah, you went to the surgeon. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah. I just like that was the coolest thing that's probably ever happened to me. <laughs> We've seen you drawing a lot. Yeah, and, uh, we knew that. When did the doll first? What? How was that a first conversation? Well, I had I had a friend who who had a connection at Kid Robot. And um, he's no longer there anymore, but it was just like the right place, right time, kind of pitched the idea. Uh -huh. They loved it. So yeah, I had these prototypes made um, for another project and that was kind of what I used to 
present the idea. And yeah, I think they were looking for some new um, ways of reintroducing their brand and their product, so. Mm -hmm. Those dolls come so that you can paint them as what you like. Yeah, they come blank. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With suggestions on how to do it, or it's all about your creativity as the owner? Well, yeah, it's all about your interpretation of how you want your doll to look, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily, I didn't have the idea of everybody just painting her like Barbie. Like, uh -huh. I, I want people to like glue stones on her and spikes and feathers and kind of use her as like a, as like a, like a canvas of other, some other kind, I don't know. Not necessarily like a beauty makeup on a doll, but. Oh yeah. Yeah, just like a cool collector's item of like whatever you're creating. With your own is. art. Yeah. Lady Red, what are you gonna put on your LaDonna doll? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything plus. <laughs> so. And where can you get all the, where can you get your LaDonna dolls? You can get LaDonna at kidrobot.com. Kidrobot.com. Yeah. All right, after you go to kidrobot.com, make sure that you go over to all your favorite social media sites and follow us at Hey Queen TV. Okay, sweetie? Pearl, oh, it's Pearl. time to go back in time. Okay. In the time machine. Can we redo some things? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, insert sound effect here. <laughs> oh, we Pearl. Pearl, we grab my hand, Pearl. Uh, oh, what kind of sound effects are these, really? Pearl, what's going on? Oh. Like a, landed. Oh, okay. It was like a Woo. portal ripped open, we flew through it, and then we landed back right where I we were. I felt like a waving inflatable arm flailing tube man there in that, <laughs> in that time warp for a second. Wow. And that's what I looked like, so it was perfect combo. <laughs> that's um, we're in St. Petersburg. Oh, it looks different. Oh my god. This is, this you did little not town, just mention that the town. The little town uh, in the Gulf Coast of Florida where yeah. little Pearl was born. Uh, Pearl yeah, that's where we're from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What were you like as a kid? Um, uh, as a kid, I was really, really, really shy. I always had people telling me I acted much more mature for my age. I didn't have any friends my own age. I was like always the one hanging out with my mom and all the adults over there, even though, you know, she was like, go play with the kids, please. You were but, like, never uh, mind, mom. Yeah. I'm talking <laughs> to Mrs. Vladimir. Yeah, my grandmother actually recently told me that at like holiday parties and like little social events that you know they would throw, I would run around as a toddler and finish off the last bits of <laughs> booze in everyone's <laughs> drinks. Wow. So I guess I was that kind of kid, yeah. Just <laughs> having a cocktail. Having a drink and a smoke. A, just smoking with <laughs> the ladies of uh, St. Petersburg. <laughs> um, now you did drag at an early age. Uh, when it wasn't, you weren't thinking you were doing drag, but your sisters were dressing you up, right? My older sister did love to do my makeup. Okay. As, a, <laughs> as like a small, small child. And uh, yeah, I would kind of like lay back and put my head in her lap and she'd do my makeup upside down. But yeah, and you know what? I guess I did do drag on Halloween when I was like eight years old. Well, because once you had a beat face, you were like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, mommy. I went to the mall and there was a wig a wig shop in the mall. A wig kiosk? That, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so whenever my mom would drag me to the mall, I'd be like, I'm going to the wig store. And I would, I would just spend like the entire time in there. And I eventually got this brown wig with bangs and had all these black streaks in it. And yeah, I wore my sister's go-go boots and I went out on Halloween like that, yeah. And you be and you became the most beautiful woman. Oh, in the she world. was cunt. She was cunt. Eight years old. Yeah, marching around town. <laughs> be like, give me some candy. <laughs> All soft. <I>. Yeah. <laughs> soft and petite. Oh my! Just showing a little shoulder. Hi. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. have another butter? I think I wore like a crushed velvet, like little freak -um dress and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Now. You said your mom was really down with giving you dolls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So did that environment make coming out easier or what was it like? Yeah, no, coming out was like not even a thing. I don't even think that I came out. I think I just told her I had a boyfriend one day. Oh, okay. That's when the I easiest. was like 12. <laughs> oh, really? 12 year old girl getting it with the fellas. I was, yeah. Yeah, I had some pretty early. Um, tendencies Dalliances. towards the boys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was not like some traumatic childhood, like coming out, coming of age story. It was, by any means. I was relatively really smooth. Yeah. Yeah, Your mom cool. had clues. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, lots and lots of clues. Lots of Barbies. And Barbies, full faces of makeup. Just general, yeah, baggage in the house. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what better thing to do in the house I remember than sitting just general her down, I remember sitting her down one night and telling her I wanted to be a vegetarian. Uh-huh. It was, you know. And she was like, okay, note to self. Yeah. One more box checked. Yeah. My sensitive homosexual Not that, you know, being a vegetarian is but but I think for an things. eight-year-old boy, it's for kind of. A, yeah. A little funny. It's a little sensitive, <laughs> which we should embrace. And yeah. Love. And your mom did. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, now, she's great. Real drag, your first time you did real drag up oh, in drags at a Halloween. At the ball, yeah. Was not even that long ago. No, it wasn't. 2012? 2012. 2012? Yeah. That's so yeah, crazy. Yeah, like 22. Yeah. That in that short amount of time, you went from trying drag to being a drag stupid oh. star celebrated around the world. Oh, I had been doing drag for like one year and five months when I stepped onto that set on Ruby wow. Star Grace. So yeah, it was like, I was like, what the fuck? This is happening way too fast. And at the time, you know, I felt so prepared and like there was nothing that anybody could ever do to stop me from doing this and just being the best. And I like, quickly learned that I had so much <laughs> to improve on so much room for improvement. I growth. bet. That's yeah. kind of hard. One year in drag yeah. doesn't give you a lot of stuff to lean on. Right. I mean, it's funny because I ended up being top three, so it's kind of like, would I want to wait or do anything differently? It's like, of course I would, but, you know, maybe it wouldn't have turned out the same way. I don't know. But, it all. I think it all yeah. worked out, Pearl. I think it did. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's all an illusion. <laughs> if you want to see much more that we can't show you on the main mm -hmm. show, Lady Red, where should they go? Go to Patreon.com. Yes, thank you. I like your fancy pronunciation <laughs> of Patreon.com slash HeyQueenTV. You get bonus segments, podcasts, and a whole bunch of gay ass fun. <laughs>